and uh, why is this is so trouble? I don't want to go to the just don't step on the cord. Somebody found it. Just don't step on the cord. Okay, he's a rat. Yeah, no, he is. I don't know. There by Mac. I just think somebody from the temple. Sure, go right here, baby. We are live, so if you want to address the camera, uh, which camera? Is it? Uh, it's at the very top where that green light is. Where it is. I'll be looking at the empty screen, but I can kind of gauge and see myself. Okay. That's all right. Okay. It's still good morning, everyone. Can everyone say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. Hey. And now that was my next line. <laughs> well, no, you say it because I have an answer. Well, okay. And I'm going to say to all of you, Boker Tov. Boker Or. is correct. Okay, so my name is Rabbi Moshe Druin. So now can you all say, good morning, Rabbi Moshe. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So I am not just a rabbi. I wear another hat. Oh, no. Okay. But it's really there because this hat allows me to do something very special. And what is that? Let's put it to you this way. Okay. Do all of you like to play in the yard outside in the playground? Say yes. If it's okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. And you have, you run around, but sometimes, not often, but sometimes you might run and you might fall. And you might get a little boo boo on your knee, right? Can that happen? Sometimes. And, right? And, and then you know what you're going to do? You're going to go to the doctor, and the doctor's going to give you a little band aid and make you feel better, right? My mama has that. Right, right. But you know what? What? Sometimes a Torah gets a boo boo. And, oh, and who are you going to call? You're going to have to call a Torah doctor. That's me. I am a Torah doctor. So I travel all around the world taking care of Torahs, that if they have little boo-boos, sometimes they have big ones, but I'm able to make Torahs feel better. And I fix Torahs. Now, I don't do it the same way exactly like a regular doctor, because let me tell you a little bit about the Torah, and then I can tell you about the boo-boos that sometimes it can have, okay? So first of all, this is a Torah. You can all say, hi, Torah. Hi. Now, a Torah, you should know, is very interesting. First of all, guys, this isn't paper. Does anyone know what this material is? Uh, what material? Paper. It looks like it may be, but it's not. Okay, are you ready for this? This is something you may have never heard before. This is, in English, it's called parchment. Can you all say parchment? Parchment. Now, Actually, parchment in Hebrew, the word is klaf. Can you say klaf? Klaf. Not klaf. You got to say klaf. Klaf. Very good. Now, klaf is made out of animal skin. It's true. This is made from the skin of a cow. And now it's a Torah. But that's what we write a Torah on. It's made on. It's not living anymore. No, I don't hear. I don't hear that anymore. Okay. But just sometimes like people make out of skin, we make shoes, leather, we make belts, we make bags, but also we can make out of that same skin, we can make a Torah. Now, when it comes to write a Torah, I didn't bring one next to me, but do we use pens to write a Torah? No. How about markers? No. Crayons? No. Paint? No. Spray paint. No. You can't buy a paint. Of course not. You're right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Guys, take a look at this. This is my pen. It's a, this yeah. is a feather pen. Okay. Now, does anyone know which bird this feather comes from? No. An owl. It's an owl. <laughs> it's not an owl. Whoever else wants to guess, you can raise your hand and I'm going to hear you. Only if you think you know 
which bird this comes from. What do you think? An eagle. An eagle feather. It's not an eagle feather, but that was a good guess. What do you think? Uh, a white bird. A white. Well, she's very smart. <laughs> oh, okay. A white bird. That is true. But what's the name of that besides, you know, Stephen? A dove. A dove feather. But. That was a really good guess, but that's not a dove feather. <laughs> Anyone, what do you think? Um, hmm. Um, hmm. A flying eagle. A spe what kind of eagle? A flying eagle. A flying eagle. Okay, well, it's not a flying eagle. Okay, one more, you at the end. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> well, either one. Bird. Well, we said a white bird. What's the name of the white bird? What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna give you all a hint. I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm gonna make the sound of this bird and as soon as you hear it, you can tell me what bird it is. This bird, when it starts to talk, it goes like this. Gobble, 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 gobble. A turkey, a turkey feather, right? So this is turkey. as we call a this. A white turkey feather. This is right. And in New York, we call this a turkey feather, okay? <laughs> Just for the record. I'm in the that's right. Now you should all know. Whoa, 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 whoa. But here's the important part. Because remember, how do we say this parchment in Hebrew? Does anyone remember? Not clap, but clap. clap. Can you say clap? clap? Okay, now look here. I'm going to teach you how to say this feather in Hebrew. But this is very important, boys and girls, and adults for that matter. Please, you got to look at me and say it the same way I say it. Okay, so you're looking at me. No, no, not at my nose. We're looking at my nose. <laughs> so you got to look at my nose. Oh, boy. Okay, okay. Everyone look at me. No, not my nose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm never going to live this one down. Okay, everyone look at me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Look here. This is called a... This is called a no. Stop. Can you all say that? Can you all? Say that? I'll do it one more time. Look at me. It's called a no. Stop. Can you say that? But if you don't shake your head, it doesn't sound right. So here we're going to go. When I count to three, we're going to do this properly. One, two, three. No. Now, I had a friend of mine that a friend of mine that told me that if you shake your head like really hard, it sounds like really good. So I'm going to make a fool of myself and so will you. Only when I count to three. One, two, peanut butter. <laughs> okay, no, no, just joking, just joking. Okay, here we go. One, remember you have to shake your head really hard. Remember, are you ready? One, two, three. No, stop. Okay, okay, let's see if you all remember. This is called what? A clock. What's this? Shake your head. Stop. And just to remind you all, I have a very special title. Remember my hat that I was telling you I don't, you can't see? I am in Hebrew called a so fair. Can you say that? So fair. Uh, because, so fair. I, because I'm really fair. I'm a fair guy. I am so, so fair. Okay, so don't forget, I'm not the chauffeur. and You don't blow me as a chauffeur. I'm a so fair. Now, last but not least, okay, this I have to be very careful with. Okay, so this looks like a very interesting jar. See, it looks like it's glass, right? And inside is a little jar, which, as you can probably see, has black stuff in there. It's not stuff. It's black ink. Now, when I write the Torah or fix the Torah, I take my special notes um, and I would dip it inside here and very carefully, very carefully write letters in the Torah. That's what I do with my special ink. Now, this ink is used for one reason only. I don't use this ink to go and do math. I don't use this ink to write letters to my mommy. <laughs> I do write letters, but not with it, not with this ink. And no, 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 no. I don't use this ink to draw on the walls. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but then your rabbi will come and say, Mr. So fair, you're so out. Okay, we don't want that. Okay. Now, 
This ink is made for one reason only, and that is to write letters in a Torah. Now, the ink, you guys are not yet, just yet ready for Google, but if you get to Google and you meet Rabbi Googlesting, he will tell you that ink comes from very interesting ingredients. There's things like copper sulfate and gum arabic and gold nuts. It even has ashes of different plants. And when you look at the letters and sometimes they shine, it's because there's actually honey inside the ink. Yeah. And this ink, by the way, do you know how to say ink in Hebrew? Now, again, look at me, but it's a little bit easier this time. This is called Dio. You have to shake your head a little bit. Dio. Can you say it? Dio. Okay. Now, if I ask you now to repeat all those four Hebrew words and you get them right, you're getting extra marks in your school. Okay, so here we go. I am the so, don't say so what? I am the so? I'm the so. Fair. Okay, so what, what's my name? I'm a so? Fair. And this is what? Fair. How do you say this? No, not clap, but clap. Ah, very good. This one is shake your head. No. So. And how do we say the ink in Hebrew with a little shake of your head with the letter D? Dio, can you say it? Dio. Okay, okay. So now we know almost everything there is to know about what I'm doing. Because I am the sofer. I am going to be working on this cloth. In the Torah, are the letters English? No. French? No. Arabic? No. Russian? No. Spanish? No. Chinese? No. So which language? China. That's close, but not exactly. Which one? Chinese. Hebrew. Ah, yeah. oh, hooray for Hebrew. Chinese. Okay, so in here, it's Hebrew. And I know most of this Torah by heart. I've worked on so many myself. So what I'm going to be doing today, and then I'm sure there'll be some other questions and things that I'd like to share. I'm not sure how long it could stay. I mean, they can stay as long as you like, but I'd like to go to a next level, if you will. Okay, so what happened was this Torah, which had all the letters and was beautiful, it was taken from its home and it got lost for a little bit. And then when they found it, it wasn't in good condition anymore. It got very wet. And it got a lot of boo-boos. So while all the letters were there, now many of the letters got rubbed off. And ha it has some other problems with the parchment. Some of the stitching came off. And some other things got rubbed off onto the parchment. And my job is to go through the entire Torah. I'm going to be here for many, 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 many hours and many days working on this Torah to try to make it feel better again. And so one of the first things I'm going to be doing, if you take a look, Oh gosh, what is this? Is not is this an umbrella? No. Well, actually, this is one side of a Torah pole. You see, the Torah is connected to poles on both sides, but the poles are supposed to look like this. You see, it's supposed to have a top and then a bottom. We we'll see with these two plates over here, and the other side has the same thing, and then they lock together. But this one, as you can probably see, the bottom got broken off. So we have now a new one. I've already taken off this old one. And my job very soon will be to attach this to the Torah. Now, how do you t attach a pole to the Torah? No, no, no. We don't use staples. No, no, no. And we don't even use screws. And we don't even use glue or taper or tape. No, this is what I use. Green. And this is not exactly string. Yarn. No, it's not even yarn. This is something that most people don't get to get hold of. It's not very common. This is called. This is called. No, it's not. That's a good thought, but it's not floss either. This is the more prop, the, the more proper word for it is the sinew of an animal. Yeah. Um, for those who are older will understand, this is actually animal gut. Oh, really? Once upon a time, they used to make out of that tennis racket back in the day, cat gut. That's how they used to make tennis rackets. But this is now, it looks like a string. It might be stronger than a string, but it's at, all of the things that we make a Torah from are actually made from organic or from animals that are kosher. So this again is how gut 
and I have special needles. I'm gonna, I cut pieces and then I stitch the edge of the parchment to the Torah. Now, that's one thing I'll be doing. Another thing I'll be doing is cleaning off a lot of dirt that the Torah got as a result of the water damage. Okay, now, for those older ones around, I'm gonna go take a, a level higher. I'm not sure if the kids will wanna listen in, but that's up to you. Here, Alice, move over and let the froggies get through. Yeah, you can go that way. Oh, here, wait. Wait right here. Hey, frogs. Thank you very much. Okay, you're more than welcome. Bye, froggies. Okay, hi guys. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Very good. Okay, now if any of the adults want to continue listening, maybe come and sit on that side so I can face you. Um, so the camera also can, whoever is online. Can see it. So you have to see it. You all want to sit in here or you want to stand and watch it? Okay. Well, there's some that we can get some stuff or they can go on that side. You can actually pull up some chairs, it'll be fine. Why don't you all go on? We'll put some on that side. They can sit on the camera if they want to sit. Okay, yeah. Let's go on that. Yeah. Here, walk around. Miss Keen. Just walk around. Follow Miss Melissa. Follow Miss Melissa. Watch the wires. Follow Miss Melissa. Here you go. Start here. All right, keep going. Okay. Chair, chair. Sit down. Come down here, too. Right here. If you need a tissue, I'll get you a tissue. Right. If you want to combine it, look on the screen right there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, we could sit over there, too. What are you doing? Getting my feather pen ready to use. This is okay. Thank you. I mean, you can literally sit right up front because the camera's up there, so they won't be seeing you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so as far as the next level of presentation, if you will, and hi to everyone at home, um, I can probably now introduce myself a little bit better <laughs> and tell you a little bit more about myself. Sure. Hello. Hey, hello, hello. So as you may have heard, my name is Rabbi Druin. I actually live in Miami. Um, every week I travel around the country doing exactly this. I'm married. I have 11 kids. You can say, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm already blessed with 16 grandchildren and one any minute. And yet my passion, other than my family, is to visit Torahs wherever they are. So today I'm in Louisville. Yesterday I was in Phoenix. <laughs> and so it goes. Now, as far as what I do as a scribe, I think it's important to note that there's only two, maybe 300 tops scribes in the world. There's not many of us who've gone on to actually qualify and learn the art of scribing Hebrew letters, because that is an art that most people don't have and don't know. That art that talent, that qualification takes approximately one to three years of practice. So it's not just you try it for a day or two, and if you got it, you have it, but it actually can take a very long time until one is qualified to actually write in the Torah. Um, now, there are four in particular elements that scribes write. What are the four areas that all scribes are trained to write? And those are the Torah, it's a mezuzah, you know, the little parchment on the door that we often kiss when we walk by, that's the mezuzah. It's tefillin, it's very tiny little portions that we put inside little black boxes and we wrap them on our arms, and we put them on our head, 
Those are tefillin. And last but not least is actually the book of Esther. Megillat Esther has to be written on parchment in the same way as the letters of Torah. And yet there's a fifth element. And that element, we're talking about a few handful of scribes have gone on to train and get qualified in. And that is to simply become a conservator. To be someone who's qualified not only to write, but to restore the script of others. So if there's a Torah that was written 100, 200, 300 years ago, and their handwriting is surely very different than my style handwriting, to be able to fix it and make it look like the original scribe woke up and came to write their own letters, that's what we have been trained to do. So as a result of that, I'm constantly traveling to visit such Torahs that need repairs and able to restore them on site. Now, a good question was asked a bit earlier about, so if there's a mistake, big deal. <laughs> so if there's one letter, I mean, could you imagine you're reading the newspaper and when you finish reading the newspaper, right at the end, you go, oh no, there's a letter missing. We're gonna go and bury the newspaper. That would be weird. <laughs> missing a letter, you say whoever wrote it made a mistake and you get on with life. And yet, if a letter is missing in the Torah, the rabbi stops reading from it. He rolls it up. He'll put it on the side. And until such time as it's fixed and restored, we won't use it. So every letter is important. And why is that? So we all know that this Torah, the, its first engagement with the Jewish people, was on Mount Sinai, right? 3,000 334 years ago, exactly. And that's when we received this Torah. And these Hebrew letters are godly letters. So surely when you're writing one of God's letters, they have to be perfect. You can't choose and pick and say, oh, I don't like this God's letter. It all has to be there. But what's more important is, do any of you know how you say the word letter in Hebrew? What? <laughs> I was waiting for you. <laughs> Moshe, thank you so much. We're going to go back okay, to our Okay, absolutely. Class. It's getting so absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay, Alf, let's all stand up. Say thank you to Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye, guys. Do you want to do it? Bye. We could do it because he, could, he does his presentation. I'll talk. Okay. Rabbi. Rabbi David. תודה but look at the difference. This was all red here, completely dirty. But, but we want you to be kosher at the end. We want your kosher certificate on the floor. Right? That's the plan. You know that it's the Jewish hospital stolen floor. Yeah. Yes. They should make a movie about that. I'm sorry. This is this, this, this is not our Torah. We are just the guardians. This is the Jewish hospital stolen Torah that was damaged by the rain. This is. Uh, was it given from Hopkinsville? Was that a Hopkinsville Torah? Uh, 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 yes, did they give it to Jewish hospitals? I don't think so. It's been remember. for a hundred years. Oh, right. Jewish oh, yeah. 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 No, it's been around for a while, I believe. But I, I think... won't put a microphone on you. Okay. And we can, I think the Shvetina has a presentation. We'll find the Torah. Do you want to do it? I'll do it out. Roll. No, no. Wild stories. The, the worst yeah. part was, I'm not going to say who. It was found, it was given to someone from our community, not to us, mm -hmm. and they just left it like that in their office for like half a year. It was wet, and no. that, that's what did the, the most of the damage. When we came, oh, yeah, 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 I yeah, called yeah. my father-in-law that used to be in restoring manuscripts, right. and he told me, yeah. first thing, oh, open it. Yeah, and I said, but but I'm damaging it, it's opening. No, he said, no, 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 no you're no. damaging it when you're keeping it closed. Wow, so, so you probably... It, you it, say it, this. It's it set at the Federation's office. I'm not going to say it whose office for half a year. And then they, they figured out that they need to do something more logical. So they gave it to us. And I, I called 
My, yeah, Allah's father, my father-in-law, he was the chief librarian of the Hebrew University Library, the National Library in Israel for like 50 years. So he got me in touch with restoration people. They said, first thing, open it. And I said, mm -hmm. we're opening it. The plaster from the bottom it's is falling apart. Uh, uh, the, the, the letters are I'm afraid to open it. Yeah. They said, don't be afraid. The worst thing you can do is keep it closed. Right, right. So you saved it, actually. Oh. Literally, <laughs> Mamash. Well, Mamash. You saved the, sa the savior of Torah, well, look well, at that. Ronnie and Marie are going to give me a medal. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose those we could deserve every day. I got, I got it. Good to see you guys. This is interesting. Yeah, we're very lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So to go a little bit further, and as they say in the classics, I'm going to dip in a little deeper to what's really going on here. Um, do you know how you say the word letter in Hebrew? So Rabbi just said it, but I will reemphasize it and then explain it. The word is ot. Can, can you say the word ot? Ot. ot? In English, you spell it O-T. Ot. And yet, and please do so after the talk, you can look at a dictionary and look up the word ot in English and see what the translation in, in Hebrew is. The first translation you're going to get from the word ot is going to be the word sign. You know when you put up a sign? Mm -hmm. Go here, don't go there, watch this. this is what, a sign. That's what an ot means. You look down and you'll see also that the word ot also means wonder. What kind of facial expression do you make when you hear or you see something that's wondrous? Your eyes open, your mouth, wow! It takes away your breath. That's an ot. If you look further down, you'll see that the word ot in Hebrew also means magic. This is our Jewish magic. Are you kidding me? 2022 and there's still Jews in the world? The world over has been trying to get rid of us. Have tried everything in the book and even what's not there to get rid of us. We've been through it all. Historically, we should not be here. We have somehow, somewhere, some magic that's held us together. This is our glue. Because we're not different than any other human. And you put humans under pressure, we shift. That's the nature of humans. And yet, while we've shifted in many ways, but we all remain one way or the other connected to this. So this is our magic. So every single letter in the Torah has its own energy, has its own meaning. Every letter has a name and an explanation to that name. Every shape of every letter has meaning. Every letter, I'm not sure if you know, has a numerical value. Did you know that? <laughs> Aleph is one, Bet is two, Gimel is three, you get to Yud, that's 10. Kaf is 20, you get to Shin is 300, Taf is 400, and suddenly you can learn all of this Torah as a mathematical equations of meanings and purposes. So when one says that this Torah has to work, they're underlying that word. That word means that this Torah has to work in every single way. Why? <laughs> because it's one whole Torah. So therefore, the job of the sofer is not just to say, okay, it looks good. It has to work good. And for the way for a Torah to work, it's physically to make sure that every letter is there. Some may look more beautiful than others, but they all have to be there. They can't be swapped. They can't be rubbed off or popped off, as in many of the letters that have happened over here. So as you heard, my job is going to be to scan through the columns there's a lot of columns here, <laughs> okay, 248 columns. And my job is going to be to actually identify any letter that is cracked, popped off, rubbed off, smeared off in any shape or form, clean it up, fix it, and keep on going. 
once I start working, I'm very fast. <laughs> now I'm just trying to still gauge the lay of the land, as they say. Now, I'm not sure if you know, but the way the sheets are attached to one another, okay, it's very similar in the way that we attach the poles because we, it's actually a seamless stitch, as you can see. Inside here, you don't see any stitch because the stitch is on the outside and it's folded in. I, you know what, I'll show you right over here if you'd like to see. Would you like to see? Say yes. Place here. So if you see here, you see here are the stitches. Let me just show you. Uh, it's not very clear here. But this is where this, it's all white. Okay. But the stitches are right over here down this line. Okay. You can see, you can see them up close. Yeah. To yeah. Maybe over here you can see yeah. a little bit. Okay. Um, but that the stitches are all outside. There's little band aids on the top and the bottom. But on the inside, other than the fold, and now it's because obviously the, the dirt from the ink, you know, rubbing off, you're seeing it much clearer here, but inside you don't see any stitch. Okay, so once again, I'll be using the sinew with the needles and so on to go ahead and stitch up the whole Torah. There'll be parts that have little rips and tears on the top. And those I'll either be mending or trimming depending on exactly the condition of it. All in all, to make sure that this Torah, when it's finished, is going to be kosher. That's that's the objective. Um, one of the things I have here with this is I have a whole bunch of these. Um, this is not chalk, but this is actually the um, egg whites, cooked, baked, and made into a powder. So whenever there's a section that really the the ink, the particle, of the ink really uh, damaged the dis and discolored the parchment. I use it almost as a, a little coating of white, and I'm able to put it over it to bring back the white color of the parchment. Um, and then the biggest job is going to be taking my feather and dipping in, and one by letter, one letter at a time, going through all these letters and fixing them up. Um, I've been doing this for 41 years already, mm, so it's awesome. been a very long time. I've been to all 50 states multiple times. Um, I've been around the world doing exactly this. So. But every Torah is its own special Torah. I mean, I've worked over 15,000 Torahs I've personally worked on. Is there, is there like a history of each of the Torahs? The so the, the interesting thing is like this. This is just an interesting observation. Well, a scribe that writes a Torah never leaves their name on it and for sure doesn't date it. The only existing script on the Torah is the script of the Torah. No one's, you know, signature and history and who's my father and my mother. It's from beginning to end. The only letters will be that of the scribe writing the letters of Torah. However, over the generations, there have been different styles of Torahs that come through different countries. So you'll have Torahs written in Germany. And if you see a script of a German style written Torah, it'll be very different than a Torah written in Poland. And if you bring in a Torah from Russia, it'll look different than the two of the others, let alone a Torah from Spain or from Morocco or from Yemen. So each one of these countries, because each one of these places, Jews lived there for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, a certain style was developed, if you will, all the same Hebrew, all the same letters. And yet the, the way the handwriting style was different from country to country. So often by the style, one can tell you both where it came from. And then in addition, one can add to that also the actual age of a Torah. Is it 100 years old? Is it a 500 years old? The oldest Torah that I've personally worked on was a Torah out of Temple Emmanuel in Dallas. And they had their scroll, which was is, now it's probably close to 800 years old, it was written in Venice, northern Italy. And when you take out the Torah, the outside is very frail and frizzled, but you open it up and the script looks like it was written yesterday. Beautiful script. It needed some mending and I had come out to do that Torah. Um, I was at the Kennedy Center, the, the Kennedy Library. So they have a Torah that was given to President Kennedy at the time and it needed to be restored and maintained. They brought me out to do that. And that scroll was about a 250 old 
small or medium sized Torah, um, Torah written in Germany originally. So each scroll has its own origin. So this particular Torah is actually a very beautiful Polish Torah, a very beautiful Torah. Um, its age is in that 120 years old, give or take. Um, it's not a 90 year old Torah, meaning that it was written shortly before the war. And it doesn't go this at certain eras, certain styles either begun or ended. So this is in that 120 year time frame of when this Torah was written. Um, very beautiful. Now, one of the interesting things also about this Torah, which is different than current Torahs, and that is, and by the way, that's what takes it past 100 years. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of a Torah called a Vav Torah. Okay, a Vav Torah is fascinating, and most of Torahs in the world today are Vav Torahs. A Vav Torah means that every single column will begin with the letter Vav. It's a certain standard, and therefore the height, the width, everything is standardized. And the Vav is going to be the first letter of every single column. This is not a Vav Torah. Now, while a Vav Torah is, if you open up, you know, there's a special book called the Tikkun that when one practices to read from Torah, they take out a, the special book that has the script of Torah, and then a copy of it with the vowels, and that's how you train to learn how to read from the Torah, right? And all those books are called Vav Torah Tikkuns, that you can actually practice one to the other. The Vav Torah creates a very standard layout of all Torahs today and for the last close to about 100 years. All Torahs today written are Vav Torahs. And yet once upon a time, the reason why they didn't, even though there were those written as a Vav Torah, but they couldn't, is because today, if you want to write a new Torah, uh, and communities are writing new Torahs all over the world. I, I was in Phoenix yesterday finishing a new Torah for Beth Israel, Congregation Beth Israel in uh, Scottsdale. And um, it's a Vav Torah. You're able to buy all the parchment that you need to write a Torah in one shot. You can buy all 62 sheets, walk in, walk out, you have them all. And then you can start writing your Torah. And they're all the same size and they've all been laid out. They, the lines are scored on there. However, once upon a time, if a scribe wanted to write a Torah, what would happen? The scribe would go down to his neighbor, the shaykhat, the one who slaughters the animals, right? And say, hey, I see you have a big bull. When you slaughter the animal, can you give me, I'll buy from you the skin. He says, sure. So he walks out a few days later and he has these big sheets, right? And he starts to write. Two weeks later, he needs more animal skin. He goes over to his neighbor and says, what do you got now? He says, I only have a little calf. So this time he's walking out with little sheets. So as a result, the, it was not even the sheets that he was getting. He was getting sometimes very large ones, sometimes very small ones. The, the standard sheets today have four columns in every sheet. Hundreds of Torahs, they'll always have four columns. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is not a standard Torah. And that's why this is for surely already older than 100 just by that observation. Hmm. Okay? So that was one of the immediate things that gave it away. And therefore, also, it is not a Vav Torah because you're having different sizes of parchments. So that's going to be the primary goal of what we're doing here. Um, last but not least, and that is, is that, and I'm not sure what the title will ultimately end up. My job is to try to give this Torah the title of being kosher. That's the job that it's uh, good and ready for ritual usage. That's my job. However, there's a little bit of a middle ground that I might be concerned how it's going to come about. Um, I'm going to, the word is I'm not sure if you've heard of this word. The word is bedi'evet. Have you heard of that word before? Bedi'evet. That's the second word. The first word is lechatchila, but we're not going to use it that much. We're going to say kosher lechatchila means kosher the way it should be. A secondary level is called kosher bedi'evet. What is bedi'evet? It goes like this. Take, for example, the challah. On Shabbat, Friday night, Right? You lift up the challah. But before we eat it, what blessing do we say? 
Hamotzi lechemina ar. Beautiful, beautiful. You knew that. I knew you knew that. Wait, but here comes the question. Wouldn't be sure. Here comes the question. Here's my challah. I'm going to give you two options and tell me which one is correct. Do I first make the blessing and then take a bite? Or do I first take a bite and then make the blessing? What's, co what's the correct way to do it? And you know the answer. You make the blessing first. Of course, you know that. You don't even think twice, right? But what happens, and this has happened to me, and it's happened to many, you're sitting Friday night with the family, and the little kid goes, and it could be a teenager, and he wasn't thinking. He knows you have to make a blessing, but he wasn't thinking. He picks up, uh oh, he took the bite before the blessing. Now, here comes the question where I'm leading up to what should he do? A, since you took the bite, you don't make a blessing anymore, or you took a bite. At least now make the blessing. Which is the correct one? Without Second is correct. Without the blessing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you're locked in your room for two months. So the fact is that if you took the bite and then you remembered, what do you do? You make the blessing now. But is that the way you should do it to begin with? No. That's Bidi Evid. Bidi Evid means after. You've already made the mistake. You're already after, did it incorrectly, but this is the second best. Make it, make the blessing after. But that's not the way you should, if, could you imagine? You were sitting at the Friday night table and you weren't thinking, you were talking to your friend. You pick up the challah, you took a bite. And you go, oops. But then as a good Jew, what are you going to, you turn around and say, okay. And you continue. Now someone else was watching. They're going to say, oh, so you guys eat before the blessing? And you're going to say, no, that was Bidi Evet. That was the loophole secondary level of fixing, making it, it's not the right way to do it, but it's, it's, it's still an acceptable way to make the blessing. Now, when it comes to Torah, there's exactly the same reality. There is the correct way to write the whole Torah. Every letter has to look perfect. That is lechatchila. That's the right way to do it, the first way. But what happens if sometimes you have letters that don't look exactly good? They don't look like I wrote it. It looks like some mess ups. As long as it can be read and it's still, it's still clear under certain circumstances, it'll pass. Will that be the right way? Because you see a letter that looks a bit crooked, does that mean that's the way you should write? No. But does that mean that that's the way that we can accept it as a secondary option? Yes. So it very well could be that this Torah may be kosher at the end, but possibly only bidievet because of some of the sections that have really deteriorated badly, that while I'm going to fix them, some of them are so inherent that it may be more difficult to completely write it, the time and the cost, as a result, will only be part of it. To be kosher, it has to, yeah. be, it has to be written. Correct. Rather than printed. Correct. Correct. Right. And everything has to be written from beginning to end. If you go ahead and you're laughing and you don't have to believe me because I got this today. Someone in Israel was silk screening mezuzah scrolls and Torahs. Do you know what that means? He was making a template on paper, cut out of the letters and then taking paint going like this and then pulling it off beautiful and they just caught him that's not what an unkosher mezuzah is that's what an unkosher mezuzah is that's correct and they, I just got an email literally this week they uncovered a group of people doing that crooked no matter where so they're okay but you were asking about this is my only tool for writing if I have pens, it's to take notes on my paper, but it never touches the Torah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. You said some of the letters come off, which would not happen if it were written on paper, because it would be absorbed. It'd be absorbed. So I'm wondering, I assume 
Well, it's, it's the question occurs, how does a letter come off? Okay, and so I won't go on any further. Okay, no, no, I got the question. And let me share with you a, a, a few answers to that. So what you're asking is simply paper, when you write on paper, it absorbs. On parchment, I think you already gave half the answer without really realizing it. The letters, the ink does not penetrate the parchment. It sits as little mounds on top. Now, the trick of this ink is that that ink connects with parchment in a permanent way. Providing the environment is correct, a Torah can last forever. Unlike paper, where the ink and the paper start to dissolve and you know you go and put things under glass and all because you're trying to preserve it, you can see Torah hundreds of years old and they look like they were written yesterday, no problem. Because the texture and the chemistry of the ink as it combines with parchment are a perfect match and can last indefinite. Okay, however, there are certain things that can cause problems here. One is the environment. And the environment can cause two different elements as far as the letter, the ink goes. Footnote. The ingredients for the ink, you can Google. You can find them out. Gold nuts, copper sulfate, gum arabic, honey, ashes. Um, <laughs> it has all these different things in it. But what they won't tell you because they don't know, is the quantities of each of those ingredients and how you brew it, how you mix it. That's a secret that only a few families in the world know, and I'm not one of them. So when we want to write a Torah or a mezuzah or any, we actually have to purchase our ink from one of these original sources. And then I sometimes may dilute it, add, may add a little vinegar, a little water, a little honey, depends on what kind of thickness I'd like and depends on what I'm working on. And, but that ink, as I mentioned, has that inherent ability to last indefinite, unless, here are the two problems. One, if the ink was used, but it was diluted heavily, or if it was used in a very thick concentrate. Now, when you write with a very thick concentrated ink, and you can actually, when you, if you would put your hand, you would actually feel little mounds of that ink once it's dried, obviously, okay? If the environment is good, it'll last no problem. The moment it becomes too dry, that ink starts to crumble. If you take the parchment and you fold it, it cracks. And that's when you'll have ink falling off. So to diffuse that problem of inks cracking, peeling, popping off, rubbing off, is you would dilute it, make it into a much thinner texture. So therefore, bending, it doesn't cause that problem because it's not that thick. But the flip end is, is that's when you'll see, not in this Torah, because this Torah does not have that second problem, you'll see letters that have the ink, the, sh the color, starts to turn to brown, light brown, and eventually it fades off. Where you look at the letters and you can't even see it because over the 100, 200 years, the ink has now faded. So the job is to get a nice mix of ink that's not too diluted, but at the same time, not too thick. In this case, it used more of the thicker side Again, until that time that the Torah had its ex experience in the outdoors, <laughs> it seems to have been that it was done fairly good. However, as I mentioned, there are a few sections here in the Torah which were restored maybe 50 years ago, and they were done very poorly. And if you'd like to see, I'd actually like to show that to you. Would you like to come and see the problems that I'm referring to? Okay. Does someone want to um, just turn this around a little bit so they, if you just make them face face this way. All right, I'll turn it. Yeah. Just a little bit, just a titch. I think, okay, that's good now. So they'll be able to see it. Okay, that should do it, thank you. Okay, if you come and take a closer look here. Okay, so here's a good sheet. Beautiful, if you're taking a look, beautiful, beautiful. Follow as I'm going. There's a problem here with the tzaddik. But now start looking down here. You see how the ink has now crumbled? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can see that even though it's crumbled, you can still see the outline letters. of the letters are still there. Yeah. But you see, oh, see. you see the, the ink has popped yeah. off there. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now let's move forward because I'm coming to that problem. Here's some more. You see some of those crumbled letters? You see that here? Mm -hmm. Okay. You see here? Mm -hmm. Now we're getting to a much worse section. Look over here. You see that? 
but here's what my concern is. Look at these letters here. And now look at these letters. These were letters that were fixed some 50 years ago by someone said an amateur. In other words, he was writing letters. And if you're familiar with Hebrew, this in many cases doesn't even look like Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You can right see, there. you see, yeah. this is the correct like side. And look what he was doing here. He had he done it right. This should have looked like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah. even if you don't read Hebrew, you can see that this doesn't look like that. Mm -hmm. This section here versus over this here. section over here. Yeah. Can you see that? Uh -huh. So that's where my real problem is going to be. This is where I'm going to have to look through literally every letter, reshaping it, because otherwise it the whole thing might be good, but I'm if you have to... one that's not, yeah. we got a problem. Yeah, okay. Okay. And you, so that's, you see what so I'm saying here? Yeah. So I'm going to have to do erasing, cutting. I'm going to, each letter I'm going to be reshaping, as they say, mm -hmm. to get it to the point mm -hmm. where you can read it. <laughs> it may not necessarily end up being the most beautiful like these letters, but at least it'll be readable, readable right. as Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going to be here for a little bit of time. I was going to say that you're not going to be done tomorrow <laughs> afternoon. No, not tomorrow <laughs> afternoon. So okay. that's the story. Do you remember the tour? So I don't remember this tour at the hospital. No. Oh, that I don't know. Oh. I don't, Where was it? I, well, there, the chapel I had an arm. The chapel I, had an arm. But, but I don't remember it ever for the Taurus. I don't remember. Okay, so I think with your permission, I'm going to start working. I'm going to yeah. check. Because I'm telling you, that's what I'm here for. I'm telling you, Hopkins, Hopkinsville had Where are you a from? School. I'm from they Miami. Closed it down, okay. And I think they gave it to Jewish. And you're a traveler. I'm going to have shown. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious. And, and I'm sure I'm going to yeah. the world's local sofa. I think <laughs> it's a rabbi. You had... The one with the orange sweater and the man standing next to you mm -hmm. were both at one time chairman of the board oh. of the Jewish hospital. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. Yeah. I, I, very I don't special. remember the history, the connection with the hospital. I, I don't know myself. <laughs> And I mean, I'm, telling one you, I'm telling you, I know it. Because your last okay. house had a database. Surely you can't remember every letter of every page of the entire Well, story. here's the good news. Um, the good news is, first of all, that I do know most of this Torah by heart. Right. But if a, a letter has completely been erased, I would take out another humash. Yeah. And I would copy it from there. Okay. Because a Torah should never be written out of memory, ever. Yeah. Even if it's only one letter. Yeah. Um, okay. But if there's a shape of it there, so I'm not, yeah, I don't just have, filling in. Correct. Yeah. Or rewriting it, but yeah. at least the image is there. The Shem Mitzvat Separat Torah. This so, was the original you. handle that it, wow. it's broken, obviously, yeah. and now there is a new. Oh, I see it's transferring the parchment on the window. Right. Shabbat. Yeah, you missed see, the early didn't... part with the preschool. This didn't get damaged. Look how dark it is. Well, I don't dark. think. Yeah. You can see it from here. Over here. Yeah. The contrast. Mm -hmm. you know, That's interesting. You're going to be here a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be here for a while. Welcome to Lloyd. I'm going to stay for Lloyd. No, 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 no. I keep on my, my journeys take me all over the world. How long do you I think that this else? visit is going to be a full three days, and I'll be working into the night. Three days. Three days. Oh my yeah. God. Once I get working without talking, because I love to talk and teach. <laughs> but I, once that finishes and I start to work and I'm focused, I'm very quick, very efficient. And I, I've i looked generally through it. And with the grace of some extra external help, I'll get there. <laughs> but uh, okay, so one down. So now at least it's attached. I'll do two more. And then I'm going to start actually on the inking, but that'll take a few more yeah. minutes. Is that the red? What, you were this just, what happened yeah, here? Yeah, that was original. I'm going to clean this off soon, but that was all over the parchment here. Yeah, that's what, what I want to do. Out too. Yeah. You see, this is what this was the, um, you see, this was the old pole. Uh -huh. You see that? This was the uh -huh. old pole. Oh. And I'm not even sure what it was, got rubbed off onto the ink. And it was completely oh, stuck wow. onto the letters. So yeah. I've, so all this. You see, you see all this dirt, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. glue, whatever it was, that was here. Yeah. I've already cleaned that off. The red yeah. that was over, I've already removed that. I'm not finished yet because I've not done the whiting and I've not yet done the inking, but I'm getting to there. So That's it's awesome. two-thirds two down, one-third to go.
Thank you so much. I think it's yeah. awesome. Thank you. This is my pleasure. Fascinating. Yeah. One, two. Can... Welcome to Louisville. <laughs> Why did you see him write? Okay, I'll put one more and then see if I can get some writing going here. And, and these just got wet or something? Is yeah. That, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's so out. some things but, are okay. Yeah. Some things are going to need to be fixed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. So Rabbi, you want me to tell you a, a joke you can tell at a sofa convention? Go for it. A Hagbah joke? Go for it. Isn't the Hagbah the, the um, honor to lift the Torah after the reading? This is correct. So this guy, this congregant is called on Yom Kippur to be the Hagbah. He lifts the Torah and he starts faltering and he's it's out of balance and he almost drops it. Worst day in the world to do it because the sanctuary is full, right? Mm -hmm. Every seat's taken, they're mm -hmm. standing in the moment. Somebody dives for it from the beam and catches it for it, touches the ground, and they put it away. Well, he's so embarrassed that he goes to the gym and he exercises and he exercises and he works out and it looks like he could be a Olympic athlete after six months. They call him back to the Torah and he lifts it and he opens it. What is it? Six panels you're supposed to show? And he goes 10 panels. Oh, he's wow. showing off with a big shot how strong he is. He twirls around. He runs off the bema, runs through the congregation, snaking his way around all the piles, comes back and puts it down on the Shohana Rook, right? Mm -hmm. on the Proudly and stands back and says, What do you think of that? And the rabbi says, not bad for Yamo Cheney. <laughs> okay, now tell us. <laughs> that means the second Aliyah. You don't lift it till the fifth or sixth. <laughs> okay. Pretty good, huh? Two points. All Two right. points. You can, yes. You can tell that you're sober. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to go. Thank you. Very no, sure, right. sure, sure, sure. How soon will you start actually? Yes, what I'm going to do now for you, because you've asked so nicely, or you're going to I'll do, the I'm going to do some inking right here. Okay. Get out your way. Oh, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Let's, 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 Wrap up? Yes. I do just want you to be aware of the time. It's just about. Yes, so. uh, it is finished. I'm actually going to be doing some restoration. They're going to watch me. Okay. And then, see, so now, look at that. So you see how many, how many letters have come off here? Ooh, there's, yeah. there's a lot more still. I can yeah. feel it. Ooh. I can feel it. That's yeah. Okay. okay. What was that? What was happening? Okay. For, for the public, yeah. But he's still going to continue to tour for the next oh, few days, actually. But I, I, just wanted... need, I just need video. Exactly. And that, yeah, I'm doing some of that right now. Yeah, yeah. that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get out of your way. I am too. <laughs> yeah. No, you can. You can. Okay. I'll work around that. So I can try and see how this goes. That um, yeah. a steady <laughs> hand. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
See that? Yeah. How long awesome. does it take? So this uh, 10, 15 minutes. Not long. Okay. Does so it I'll, help if you're left handed? No, no, no. Because when you're left, the thing is that Hebrew's written from right is... to left, but the letters are pulled from left to right. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't do that with the left hand. Okay. So this is this is the job. I'll be sitting here going through all these thousands of letters that are cracked and popping off and re-inking them. You don't even wear glasses. No. <laughs> <Perhaps>. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So glad yeah, you're just... here. Learned so, a lot so... in the old days. Thank you. That's I mean, awesome. Off camera, but um, often I like to joke and say my real title is is to be a glorified forger. <laughs> <laughs> because, we won't quote you. We won't. But you see what I'm saying? Because I'm really yeah. forging the original script. This is not mine. Because if I put my handwriting right here, you would say, oh, you destroyed the Torah. I mean, it yeah. doesn't look right. Yeah. But for me to reenact exactly the way the original letters were there. And once it's dry, you shouldn't be able to tell I was here. Now that's I good. like that. Yeah, yeah. That's um, awesome. yes, that's unfortunate. That was someone who didn't he knew how to write, maybe, but not to fix. So Thank yes. Thank you very so much. much. Thank My you pleasure. So much. Good yes. Enjoy Louisville. Enjoy Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Get out of the library. You have a good name yeah. place for here. <laughs> no, actually, our my family's favorite place on the planet is very close to here, and that's Lake Nantahala. You know where that is a bit south from here? No. Next to Franklin. It's in North in, in North Carolina. I'm oh. just past the, the, the triangle, the, you know, of, uh, Kentucky yeah. and North Carolina. So we come up into this area for our vacation. It's beautiful here. Welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. A pleasure. It was wonderful. And what uh, time is the news? Uh, we know today at four. Four? And, huh? and other news get from you, but I know for sure it's in the four. At what time? 41. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, we're doing a lot of work. I know. 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 I know